All right. Accidentally reading ahead. Spoilers. Okay. Hi, I'm Hannah. Welcome back to Twilight Rewrite, where we are rewriting the Twilight series. Pretty straightforward. Today we're on chapter six. It's called Scary Stories. Very exciting, very enticing. I think this is the chapter Jacob comes in on. I haven't decided what I'm gonna rename him. If you wanna watch the other ones, there's a playlist of all the other chapters that I've edited. And if you want to read the PDFs of the edited versions, just subscribe to my newsletter that is linked in the description. And let's get hopping. Chapter six, colon, scary stories. I don't like when things are all caps. It freaks me out. Anyway. <sighs> I'm still doing this, can you believe it? As I sat in my room trying to concentrate on the third act of Macbeth, Okay. I was really listening for my truck. I would have thought even over the pounding rain, I could have heard the engines roar. Oh, last chapter, Edward drove her home because she passed out in biology and Alice was supposed to bring her truck back. Okay, I'm caught up. But when I went to peek out the curtain again, it was suddenly there. That's a weird sentence. I wasn't looking forward to Friday and it more than lived up to my non-expectations. There's a really weird tense here because she's talking about being scared of going back to school. I wasn't looking forward to Friday. Of course there were the fainting comments. So she's already there? What if we just say Friday more than lived up to my non-expectations? Of course there were the fainting comments. Jessica especially seemed to get a kick out of that. Luckily, Mike had kept his mouth shut so no one seemed to know about Edward's involvement. She did have a lot of questions about lunch though. Who cares? So what did Edward Cullen want yesterday? Jessica asked in trig. What, I feel like this uh, tone again is taking the approach that uh, Bella knows more than she should, which I mentioned before. So she's like, she didn't have a lot of questions about lunch. So what did Edward Cullen want yesterday? Jessica asked and Trig. So if we take out that sentence, then say, so what did Edward, weird that she said Cullen. What did Edward want yesterday? Jessica asked and Trigged. Intrigued. <laughs> I choked before I realized she was asking about lunch. I don't know, I answered truthfully. He never really got to the point. Um, this is a little dramatic, but she's apparently worried that people would know that Edward was there when she passed out. So I don't know, I think that works. You looked kind of mad, she fished. Did I? I kept my expression blank. You know, I've never seen him sit with anyone but his family before. That was weird. Weird, I agreed. She seemed annoyed. There's our semicolon. I'm gonna take out she seemed annoyed and just have she flipped her dark curls impatiently because that's telly enough. <laughs> I guess she'd been hoping to hear something that would make a good story for her to pass on. Well, obviously I'm gonna take out for her to pass on. Or we could even say would make good gossip. The worst part about Friday was that even though I knew he wasn't gonna be there, I still hoped. When I walked into the cafeteria with Jessica and Mike, I couldn't help from looking at his table where Rosalie, Alice, and Jasper sat talking heads close together. And I couldn't stop the gloom that engulfed me as I realized I didn't know how long I would have to wait before I saw him again. Huh? I couldn't stop the gloom that engulfed me. What? Okay, the worst part about Friday was that, comma, even though I knew he wasn't gonna be there, I still hoped. Why did she know that he wasn't gonna be there? When I walked into the cafeteria with Jessica and Mike, I couldn't keep from looking at his table where Rosalie, Alice, and Jasper sat talking heads close together, and I couldn't stop the gloom that engulfed me as I realized I didn't know how long I would have to wait before I saw him again. Oh, okay. So here's the thing. <laughs> Shut up. At my usual table, everyone was full of our plans for the next day. Just gonna say at lunch. Mike was animated again, putting a great deal of trust in the local weatherman, who, I was just saying meteorologist, that's a sexy word, who promised sun tomorrow. I'd have to see that before I believed it, but it was warmer today, almost 60. Maybe the outing wouldn't be completely miserable. Bella's so fun, I see why everyone wants her around. I intercepted a few unfriendly glances from Lauren. <laughs> Fucking Lauren, I missed her. Uh, during lunch, which I didn't understand until we were all walking out of the room together. I was right behind her, just a foot from her slick silver blonde hair. Mm -mm. And she was evidently unaware of that. Don't know why Bella, she sneered my name, doesn't just sit with the Cullens from now on. I'm gonna take that out. I heard her muttering to Mike. Mm. So I'm gonna take this out. And I think if we put italics, it, it does it, okay. And then just, she muttered to Mike. I'd never noticed what an unpleasant nasal voice she had. Hmm. And I was surprised by the malice in it. 
you're a bitch. Why are you surprised? I really didn't know her well at all. Certainly not well enough for her to dislike me or so I thought. She's my friend, semicolon. She sits with us, Mike whispered back loyally, but also a bit territorially. I paused to let Jess and Angela pass me. I didn't want to hear any more. That night at dinner, Charlie seemed enthusiastic about my trip to La Push in the morning. I think he felt guilty for leaving me home alone on the weekends, but he'd spent too many years building his habits to break them now. Of course, he knew the names of all the kids going and their parents and their great grandparents too, probably. He seemed to approve. I wondered if he would approve of my plan to ride to Seattle with Edward Cullen. Not that I was going to tell him. Dad, do you know a place called Goat Rocks or something like that? I think it's south of Mount Rainier, I asked casually. Yeah, why? I shrugged. Some kids were talking about camping there. It's not a very good place for camping, he sounded surprised. Too many bears. <laughs> Too many bears. Most people go there during the hunting season. Oh, I murmured. Maybe I got the name wrong. I meant to sleep in, but an unusual brightness woke me. I opened my eyes to see a clear yellow light streaming through my window. Ooh, I couldn't believe it. I hurried to the window to check, and sure enough, there was the sun. She's describing sunlight. The sunlight freaked her out. It was in the wrong place in the sky, too low, and it didn't seem to be as close as it should be, but it was definitely the sun. Huh? Huh? Clouds ringed the horizon, but a large patch of blue was visible in the middle. I lingered by the window as long as I could, afraid that if I left the blue comma, the blue would just would disappear again. Open my eyes to see a clear yellow light. That's so stupid. Just say that the say it's the sun. So is she just describing living further from the equator than she's used to? Is that what that's all about? It's a little much, but okay. The Newton's Olympic Outfitters store was just north of town. I'd seen the store, but I'd never stopped there, not having much need for any supplies required for being outdoors over an extended period of time. Sure, who cares? In the parking lot, I recognized Mike Suburban and Tyler Centra. As I pulled up next to their vehicle, I could see the group standing around in front of the Suburban. Eric was there. No, Erica. Along with two boys I had class with. Why don't we just end a sentence? Why do we have to do this? Okay, I was fairly sure their names were Ben and Connor. Jess was there, flanked by Angela and Lauren. Three other girls stood with them, including one I remembered falling over in gym on Friday. Enemy number three. That one gave me a dirty look. Of course, as I got out of the truck and whispered something to Lauren, Lauren shook out her corn silk hair. I feel like the more that you describe a woman in this book, if you're Stephanie Meyer in this book in particular, the more you describe their hair, the more they're a bitch. You know what I mean? Just like, oh, she moved her hair. That's nefarious. So it was going to be one of those days. At least Mike was happy to see me. Are there any girls that Bella gets along with before like vampires? Rosalie doesn't like her either. Is it just Alice? Alice is the first woman that's shown her kindness <laughs> and they don't end up together. It's fine. I'm not upset. You came, he called, delighted. And I said it would be sunny today, didn't I? I told you I was coming, I reminded him. We're just waiting for Lee and Samantha, dot, dot, dot. Unless you invited someone else, Mike added. Nope, I lied lightly, hoping I wouldn't get caught in the lie. I'm just gonna say caught, but also wishing that a miracle would occur and Edward would appear. Mike looks satisfied. Will you ride in my car? It's that or Lee's mom's minivan, and we hate Lee's mom's minivan. Sure, he smiled blissfully. It was so easy to make Mike happy. You can have shotgun, he promised. I hid my chagrin. It wasn't as simple to make Mike and Jessica happy at the same time. I could see Jessica glowering at us now. All of them, every woman is the enemy. The numbers worked out in my favor though. Lee brought two extra people and suddenly every seat was necessary. I managed to wedge Jess in between Mike and me in the front seat of the Suburban. Mike could have been more graceful about it, but at least Jess seemed appeased. It was only 15 miles to La Push from Forks with gorgeous dense green forests edging the road most of the way and the wide Quileute River snaking beneath it twice. Beneath the road, I was glad I had the window seat. We'd rolled the windows down, the Suburban was a bit claustrophobic with nine people in it, and I tried to absorb as much sunlight as possible. I'd been to the beaches around La Push many times during my fork summers with Charlie, so the mile-long crescent of the first beach was familiar to me. It was still breathtaking, the water was dark gray even in the sunlight, white-capped and heaving to the gray rocky shore. Islands rose out of the steel harbor waters with sheer cliff sides reaching to uneven summits and crowned with- Why are you so mad? What's the matter? The beach had only a thin border of actual sand at the water's edge, after which it grew into millions of large, smooth stones that looked uniformly gray from a distance. But close up, God, I'm so tired, where every shade a stone could be. Terracotta, sea green, lavender, blue, gray, dull gold. The tide line was strewn with huge driftwood trees, 
bleached bone white in the salt waves, some piled together against the edge of the forest fringe, some lying solitary just out of reach of the waves. Is it just me or is this so many words? There was a brisk wind coming off the waves, cool and briny. Pelicans floated on the swells while seagulls and a lone eagle wheeled above them. Clouds still circled the sky. Mm. What else would they be circling? Threatening to invade at any moment. But for now, the sun shone bravely in its halo of blue sky. We picked our way down to the beach, Mike leading the way to a ring of driftwood logs that had obviously been used for parties like ours before. There was a fire circle already in place filled with black ashes. Eric and the boy I thought was named Ben gathered broken branches of driftwood from the dryer piles against- Didn't they drive for hours? How long did they drive and she didn't learn Ben's name? 15 miles. Okay. Well, she had a few minutes. I feel like she could have learned Ben's name. Blah, blah, blah. Soon had a teepee-shaped construction built atop the old cinders. Have you ever seen a driftwood fire? Mike asked me. I was sitting on one of the bone-colored benches. The other girls clustered, gossiping excitedly on either side of me. Why does she hate women so much? The other girls clustered, mostly chattering excitedly on either side of me. Um, Jessica was doubled over following a tiny sand crab with the tip of her finger. Mike kneeled by the fire, lighting one of the smaller sticks with a cigarette lighter. I don't like the light repetition, so we could just say anything else. Or striking one of the smaller sticks with a cigarette lighter. No, I said as he placed the blazing twig carefully against the teepee. You'll like this then, watch the colors. He lit another small branch and laid it alongside the first. The flames started to lick quickly up the dry wood. We don't like started to in this house. It's blue, I said in surprise. It's blue! The salt does it, pretty, isn't it? <laughs> he lit one more piece, placed it where the fire hadn't yet caught. Hadn't yet caught. Hadn't caught. Placed it where the fire hadn't caught and then came to sit by me. Thankfully, Jess was on his other side. She turned to him and claimed his attention. I watched the strange blue and... Uh, why is Bella allowed to have interests that aren't boys, but no one else is? Call his attention to the crab. <laughs> Call his attention to the crab. Ew, he said. But he leaned over. And watched it with her. I think adding a crab to scenes automatically makes it less misogynist. After a half hour of chatter, some of the boys wanted to hike to the nearby tide pools. We hung around for a while, then some of the boys wanted to hike to the nearby tide pools. I'm gonna take out nearby, cause like, they're all on the beach. Okay. It was a dilemma. On the one hand, I loved the tide pools. Saya, quit. They had fascinated me since I was a child. They were one of the only things I ever looked forward to when I had to come to Forks. On the other hand, I'd also fallen into them. <laughs> On the other hand, I'd also <laughs> fallen into them a lot. Not a big deal when you're seven and with your dad. So when she was seven, she was like, wow, I was a pretty clumsy kid. I used to just fall into the tide pools because I was a child. It sure is gonna happen now and that'll be embarrassing. Just don't fall down, stupid. It reminded me of Edward's request that I not fall into the ocean. Okay, it was a dilemma. I'll leave it, but I'm gonna clean it up a little. I loved the tide pools. They had fascinated me since I was a child. They were the only things I ever looked forward to when I had to cut, no. She's just gonna be a little bit nicer to Charlie in my world. On the other hand, I'd also fallen into them a lot. Not a big deal when you're seven with your dad. It reminded me of Edward's request that I not fall into the ocean. Lauren was the one who made my decision for me. She didn't want to hike and she was definitely wearing the wrong shoes for it. Mostly the other girls besides Angela and Jessica decided to stay on the beach as well. I waited until Tyler and Erica had committed to remaining with them before I got up quietly to join the pro hiking group. Wait, what? Mike gave me a huge smile when he saw that I was coming. <sighs> I don't know why she was waiting for, I guess cause Tyler and Erica both like her, but so does Mike. Why doesn't she just not hang out with these people? The hike wasn't too long though. I hated to lose the sky in the woods. What? Oh. 
That's stupid. The green light of the forest was strangely at odds with the adolescent laughter, too murky and ominous to be in harmony with the light banter around me. I had to watch each step I took very carefully, avoiding roots below and branches above, and I soon fell behind. Eventually, I broke through emerald confines of the forest and found the rocky shore again. It was low tide and a tidal river flowed past us on its way to the sea. Along its pebbled banks, shallow pools that never completely drained were teeming with life. I was very cautious not to lean too far over the little ocean ponds. The others were fearless, leaping over the rocks, perching precariously on the edges. I found a very stable looking rock on the fringe of one of the largest pools and sat there cautiously, spellbound by the natural aquarium below me. Bouquets of brilliant and then Anemones? The bouquets of brilliant anemones undulated ceaselessly in the invisible current. Bitch, if you don't shut up. I'm gonna take out brilliant. I'm gonna... God. Take out ceaselessly, I guess I'll leave undulated, even though it's disgusting. Twisted shells scurried about the edges, obscuring the crabs within them. What? Uh, shut up. The bouquets of anemones undulated the, in the invisible current. Twisted shells scurried about the edges. Starfish stuck motionlessly to the rocks and each other, while one small black eel with white racing stripes wove through the bright green weeds, waiting for the sea to return. I was completely absorbed, except for one small part of my mind that wondered what Edward was doing now and trying to imagine what he would be saying if he were here with me. Who cares? Finally, the boys were hungry and I got up stiffly to follow them back. I tried to keep up better this time through the woods, so naturally I fell a few times. I got some shallow scrapes on my palms and the knees of my jeans were stained green, but it could have been worse. I really feel like she should see a doctor about this. Why she falls down all the time. When we got back to first beach, the group we'd left behind had multiplied. As we got closer, we could see the shining straight black hair and copper skin of newcomers. <laughs> Jacob's here. Teenagers from the reservation come to socialize. I'm so excited. The food was already being passed around and the boys hurried to claim a share while Erica introduced us as we entered the Driftwood Circle. Angela and I were the last to arrive and as Erica said our names, I noticed a younger boy, no, a younger girl, sitting on the stones near the fire, glance up at me in interest. I sat, we don't need down. I sat next to Angela and Mike brought us sandwiches and an array of sodas to choose from while a boy who looked to be the oldest of the visitors rattled off the names of the seven others with him. All I caught was that one of the girls was also named Jessica and the girl who noticed me was named, what are we calling? Girl Jacob. Girl names that start with J. A. We'll keep the J A. There's like Jacinta, Jade, Jasmine. Jasmine could be cute. And then they can call her Jazz for short. Oh, it's gonna be so cute. Okay. It was relaxing to sit with Angela. She was a restful kind of person to be around. Thank God she finally likes a girl. Shouldn't feel the need to fill every silence with chatter like regular women. Shit feel the need to fill every silence. She left me free to think undisturbed while we ate. And I was thinking about how disjointedly time seemed to flow in Forks. Passing in a blur at times with single images standing out more clearly than others. And then at other times, every second was significant. Etched in my mind, I knew exactly what caused the difference and it disturbed me. I have an idea. During lunch, the clouds started to advance, slinking across the blue sky, darting in front of the sun momentarily, casting long shadows across the beach and blackening the waves. As I finished eating, people started to drift away in twos and threes. Some walked down to the edge of the waves, trying to skip rocks across the choppy surface. Others were gathering a second expedition to the tide pools. Mike, with Jessica shadowing him, headed up to the one shop in the village. Some of the local kids went with them, others went along on the hike. By the time they had all scattered, I was sitting alone on my driftwood log with Lauren and Tyler occupying themselves by the CD player someone had thought to bring and three teenagers from the reservation perched around the circle, including the girl named Jasmine and the oldest boy who had acted as spokesperson. A few minutes after Angela left with the hikers, Jasmine sauntered over to take her place by my side. She looked 14, maybe 15, and had long, glossy black hair pulled back with a rubber band at the nape of her neck. Her skin was beautiful, silky, and russet colored. Her eyes were dark, set deep above the high plains of her cheekbones. She still had just a hint of childness roundness around her chin. Jasmine sounds cute. Altogether, a very pretty face. However, my positive opinions of her looks was damaged by the first words out of her mouth. You're Isabella Swan, aren't you? 
was like the first day of school all over again. Bella, I sighed, I'm Jasmine Black. She is just gonna be pronoun changing from here on out. She held her hand out in a friendly gesture. You bought my dad's truck. Oh, I said relieved, shaking her sleek hand. You're Billy's daughter. I probably should remember you. No, I'm the youngest of the family. You would remember my older sisters, Rachel and Rebecca, I suddenly recalled. Charlie and Billy had thrown us together a lot during my vis visits to keep us busy while they fished. We were all too shy to make much progress as friends. Of course, I'd kicked up enough tantrums to end the fishing trips by the time I was 11. Based on the comments and messages I got whenever I made Eric a girl, um, to anyone who's really angrily typing right now, why are you gonna make everything gay? Why are you so bothered? Are you scared that you're next? That's between you and God. Are they here? I examined the girls at the ocean's edge, wondering if I would recognize them now. No, Jasmine shook her head. Rachel got a scholarship to Washington State and Rebecca married a Samoan surfer. She lives in Hawaii now, sick. Married, wow, I was stunned. The twins were only a little over a year older than I was. Were only a little over a year older. Than That's, the twins were only two years older than me. So how do you like the truck, he asked. I love it, it runs great. Yeah, but it's really slow, she laughed. I was so relieved when Charlie bought it. My dad wouldn't let me work on building another car when we had a perfectly good vehicle right there. It's not that slow, I objected. Have you tried going over 60? No, I admitted. Good, don't, she grinned. I couldn't help grinning back. It does great in a collision, I offered in my truck's defense. I don't think a tank could take out that old monster. She agreed with another laugh. So you build cars? I asked, impressed. When I have free time and parts, you wouldn't happen to know where I could get my hands on a master cylinder for a 1986 Volkswagen Rabbit. She had a pleasant husky voice. I just think Jacob as a girl is better, I'm gonna be honest. Sorry, I laughed, haven't seen any lately, but I'll keep my eyes open for you. As if I knew what that was, she was very easy to talk with. We don't need to put as if I knew what that was. I think we can assume. He flashed a brilliant smile, it's gonna be a she. Looking at me appreciatively in a way I was learning to recognize. I wasn't the only one who noticed. You know Bella? Jasmine? Lauren asked. And what I imagined was an insolent tone from across the fire. Did she just notice? <laughs> We've sort of known each other since I was born, she laughed, smiling at me again. How nice. Lauren didn't sound like she thought it was nice at all and her pale fishy eyes narrowed. God, if I weren't making boys into girl characters, there wouldn't be a character that Bella respected who is a woman. How nice. <sighs> Bella, she called again, watching my face carefully. Wait, what? Is this still Lauren? If we just put this up there, Bella. I was just saying to Tyler that it was too bad none of the Collins could come out today. Didn't anyone think to invite them? Her expression of concern was unconvincing. You mean Dr. Carlisle Cullen's family? The tall older boy asked before I could respond, much to Lauren's irritation. He was really closer to a man than a boy and his voice was very deep, okay? Yes, do you know them? She asked condescendingly, turning halfway toward him. The Collins don't come here, he said in a tone that closed the subject, ignoring her question. Tyler, trying to win back her attention, asked Lauren's opinion on a CD he held. She was distracted. I stared at the deep voiced boy taken aback, but he was looking away toward the dark forest behind us. He'd said that the Collins didn't come here, but his tone had implied something more, that they weren't allowed. They were prohibited. Is that what not allowed means, Bella? His manner left a strange impression on me, and I tried to ignore it without success. Let's take out without success. Jacob interrupted my meditation. <laughs> So is Forks driving you insane yet? It was a stupid plan, but I didn't have any better ideas. I hoped that young Jasmine was as yet inexperienced as yet. What? Oh my God. Hope that young, let's take out young. Cause that's, I don't know. This is rubbing me wrong already. I hope that Jasmine was inexperienced around girls so that she wouldn't see through my sure to be pitiful attempts at flirting. Do you want to walk down the beach with me? I asked, trying to imitate the way that Edward had, wait, what? trying to imitate, mm, I hate this book so much. Do you want to walk down the beach with me? I asked, trying to imitate that way Edward had of looking up from underneath his eyelashes. <laughs> it couldn't have nearly the same effect, I was sure, but Jacob jumped up willingly though. Jasmine. As we walked north across the multi-hued stones toward the driftwood seawall, the clouds finally closed ranks across the sky, causing the sea to darken and the temperature to drop. I shoved my hands deep into the pockets of my jacket. So you're what, 16? I asked, trying to look like an idiot as I fluttered my eyelids the way I'd seen girls do on TV. There's no way that she has to go by TV and Edward only to know how to speak to people. This is a little weird. <sighs> Let's just make this 
Sadler by taking that out. So you what, 16? I just turned 15, he confessed, flattered. Really? My face was full of false surprise. I'm gonna say voice. I would have thought you were older. I'm tall for my age, she explained. I'm definitely gonna miss some of these pronouns. Do you come into Forks much? I asked archly as if I was hoping for a yes. I sounded idiotic to myself. I was afraid he would turn on me with disgust and accuse me of fraud. Shut up. Not too much, she admitted with a frown. But when I got my car finished, I can go up as much as I want after I get my license, she amended. Who was that other boy, Lauren? Who was that boy Lauren was talking to? He seemed a little old to be hanging out with us. I purposely locked myself in with the youngsters trying to make it clear that I preferred Jasmine. That's Sam, he's 19, she informed me. What was that he was saying about the doctor's family? I asked innocently. The Collins, oh, they're not supposed to come onto the reservation. She looked away out toward James Island. What is James Island? As he confirmed what I thought, she confirmed what I'd thought I'd heard in Sam's voice. Uh, why not? She glanced back at me, biting her lip. Oops, I'm not supposed to say anything about that. Oh, I don't tell anyone, I'm just curious. I tried to make my smile alluring, wondering if I was laying it on too thick. She smiled back though, looking alert. <laughs> Uh, then she lifted one eyebrow and her voice was even huskier than before. Do you like scary stories? She asked ominously. I love them, I enthused, making an effort to smolder at her. G girls, please. <sighs> Jasmine strolled to a nearby driftwood tree that had its roots stick. Is it driftwood if it's attached to the ground? I'm gonna say log, just cause tree does not sit well with my spirit. Okay, um, sticking out like the attenuated legs. What? Why do we have to put all of these words? He perched, she perched. She perched lightly on one of the twisted roots while I sat, ugh, Saya, that was cold, stop. She perched lightly on one of the twisted roots while I sat beneath her on the body of the tree. She stared down at the rocks, a smile hovering around the edges of her broad lips. I could see she was going to try to make this good. I focused on keeping the vital interest I felt out of my eyes. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Do you know any of our old stories about where we came from? The Will Utes, I mean, she began. Not really, I admitted. Well, there are lots of legends, some of them claiming to date back to the floods. The flood, oh God, when the Mormonism comes out and punches you. Supposedly the ancient Quill Utes tied their canoes to the tops of the tallest trees in the mountains to survive like Noah in the ark. He smiled to show me, she smiled, to show me how little stock she put in the histories. Another legend claims that we descended from wolves and that the wolves were our brothers still, are our brothers still. It's against tribal law to kill them. Then there are, are the stories about the cold ones. His voice dropped a little lower. The cold ones, I asked, not faking my intrigue now. Yes, there are stories of the cold ones as old as the wolf legends and some much more recent. According to legend, my own great grandfather knew some of them. He was the one who made the treaty that kept them off our land. He rolled his eyes. Your great grandfather, I encouraged. He was, oh wait, she rolled her eyes. I told you I was gonna start missing him. He was. A a tribal leader like my father. You see, the cold ones are the natural enemies of the wolf. Well, not the wolf really, but the wolves that turn into men like our ancestors. We would call them werewolves. Werewolves have enemies? Only one. I stared at her earnestly, hoping to disguise my impatience as admiration. So you see, Jasmine continued, the cold ones are traditionally our enemies, but this pack that came to our territory during my great grandfather's time was different. They didn't hunt the way others of their kind did. They weren't supposed to be dangerous to the tribe. So my great grandfather made a truce with them. If they would promise to stay off our lands, we wouldn't expose them to the pale faces. She winked at me. If they weren't dangerous, then why? I tried to understand, struggling not to let her see how seriously I was considering this ghost story. There's always a risk for humans to be around the cold ones, even if they're civilized like this clan was. You never know when they might get too hungry to resist. She deliberately worked a thick edge of menace into her tone. What do you mean civilized? They claimed that they didn't hunt humans. They supposedly were somehow able to prey on animals instead. They supposedly were some, oh my God. Why? They preyed on animals. Why can't we just say that? I try to keep my voice casual. So how does it fit in with the Cullens? Are they like the cold ones your great grandfather met? No, she paused dramatically. They are the same one. She must have thought the expression on my face was fear inspired by her story. She smiled, pleased, and continued. There are more of them now, a new female and a new male, but the rest are the same. It, in my great grandfather's time, they already knew of the leader, Carlisle. He'd been there and gone before your people had even arrived. He was fighting a smile. And what are they? I finally asked. What are the cold ones? She smiled darkly. Blood drinkers, she replied in a chilling voice. Your people call them vampires. I stared out at the rough surf after she answered, not sure what my face was exposing. 
You have goosebumps, she laughed delightedly. You're a good storyteller, I complimented her, still staring into the waves. Pretty crazy stuff though, isn't it? No wonder my dad doesn't want us to talk about it anymore. I couldn't control my expression enough to look at her yet. Don't worry, I won't give you away. I guess I just violated the treaty, she laughed. <laughs> I'll take it to the grave, I promised, and then I shivered. Seriously though, don't say anything to Charlie. He was pretty mad at my dad when he heard that some of us weren't going to the hospital since Dr. Collins started working there. This is where I get lost. The whole premise of the vampires being in high school is so that they can be as young as possible when they arrive and then stay in one place for as long as possible without people realizing they aren't aging or whatever. Which first off, I feel like saying, this is my child and then the child doesn't change at all is weirder than being like, this is my kid who's in like online college or something. So they just got back to Forks. But if this entire tribe literally knows what they are and also tells people like the police chief, if Charlie's bothered about that, wouldn't he just disprove it? So he knows that there are vampires because it would be so easy to prove that Carlisle had like just been there a few decades ago or whatever. Huh? Anyway. So do you think we're a bunch of superstitious natives or what? Stephanie, she asked in a playful tone, but with a hint of worry, I still hadn't looked away from the ocean. I turned and smiled at her as normally as I could. No, I think you're very good at telling scary stories though. I still have goosebumps, see? I held up my arm. Cool, she smiled. And then the sound of the beach rocks clattering against each other warned us that someone was approaching. Our heads snapped up at the same time to see Mike and Jessica about 50 yards away walking toward us. There you are, Bella, Mike called in relief, waving his arm over his head. Is that your boyfriend? Jasmine asked, alerted by the jealous edge in Mike's voice. I was surprised it was so obvious. Mm. No, definitely not, I whispered. I was tremendously grateful to Jasmine and eager to make her as happy as possible. I winked at her, carefully turning away from Mike to do so. She smiled, elated by my inept flirting. Let's just say she smiled. So when I get my license, you should come see me in Forks. We could hang out sometime. I felt guilty as I said this, knowing that I'd used her, but I really did like Jasmine. She was someone I could easily be friends with. See, now she can be friends with a girl and it can be normal. Mike had reached us now with Jessica still a few paces back. I could see his eyes appraising, appraising Jasmine and looking satisfied at her obvious youth. Ew. Wait, no, that's gross now. I'm taking that part out. Where have you been? He asked, so the answer was right in front of him. Jasmine was just telling me some local stories I volunteered. It was really interesting. I smiled at Jasmine warmly and she grinned back. Well, Mike paused, carefully reassessing the situation as he watched our camaraderie. We're packing up. It looks like it's going to rain soon. We all looked up at the glowering sky. It certainly did look like rain. Okay, I jumped up. I'm coming. It was nice to see you again, Jasmine said, and I could tell <laughs> she was taunting Mike just a bit. See, this would be so annoying if it were a boy. It really was. Next time Charlie comes down to see Billy, I'll come too, I promise. His grin stretched across, wait, her grin. Stretched across her face. That would be really cool. And thanks, I added earnestly. I pulled up my hood as we tramped across the... Jasmine's gonna cut all her hair off soon. I pulled up my hood as we tramped across the rocks toward the parking lot. A few drops were beginning to fall, making black spots on the stones where they landed. <laughs> when it's rain. When we got to the Suburban, the others were already loading everything back in. I crawled in the back seat by Angela and Tyler, announcing that I'd already had my turn in the shotgun position. Angela just stared out the window at the escalating storm and Lauren twisted around in the middle seat to occupy Tyler's attention. <sighs> So I could simply lay my head back on the seat and close my eyes and try very hard not to think. That's not hard for you, babe. Don't pretend like you're struggling. <laughs> okay, wait, well, I'm gonna give one of the girls a book. And Lauren pulled a novel out of her jacket. Perfect, we did it. Okay, sick. I'm gonna go make that a PDF and send it out to my mailing list. All of the weirder people can go ahead and leave me comments being really mad that I made Jacob a girl. And I'll see you next week, bye.